Hey Wild One, this is the very first video where we're going to start focusing on solo female international travel and I'm going to start by showing you how I pack. I strategically pack using a method that I learned four years ago while backpacking the Pacific Crest Trail. I really learned how to carry everything on my back. So I believe that the less bags you pack, the less baggage you have. The lighter you pack, the lighter you are, the more mobile. And it really comes back to a mentality that you have. So today I'm going to unpack my pack. I just arrived back home from six days in Baja Sur. That's in Mexico. That's the very southern tip of Baja Sur. I'm going to show you my entire Baja Sur trip, take you with me on the trip in more of a vlog style video that's coming up on this channel. If you've been on these adventures with me for a while, you know I usually don't like carry a camera in my face everywhere. I'm pretty opposed to that, but I'm going to try it out for the next few trips. So we're going to break down how I strategically pack because there is a strategy that I used that I learned four years ago while hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. I hiked from April to August straight through and you carried everything on your back, which I got down to about, I think, 17 to 20 pounds was my pack weight. I try to go very ultra light and I carry over that packing style and even the stuffing style. That's kind of um, a snippet of a tip for you that I'm gonna go over. I carry that over into this bag and to travel because I like to just grab and go, especially when I'm hopping in and out of airplanes and to taxis, buses. I don't want to carry a rolly bag and carry a backpack and carry a purse and I don't want to have three bags and then what if I want to bring a surfboard or a skateboard? What if I want to bring my skis? I just think that like stresses me out thinking of all those bags. Number one, that stresses me out. Number two, I worry that I'm going to leave something behind or lose something. Something will get lost because there's just too many things to keep track of. There are certain compartments that I have for certain items so that I can double check like, okay, this is for my keys and passport. Check. That's in there. My sunglasses. I do want to let you guys know that this video is in no shape, form, way, nothing at all sponsored, an ad, uh, a collaboration, an affiliate link. There's nothing. I bought this bag with my own money after researching. So let's start with the bag story. This past summer, I started consciously thinking, I want a bag that I can carry everything inside. I don't want a camera bag and a laptop bag and then a clothes bag. I want to do it all in one bag. And then one day I was in a surf shop here in San Diego. It's called San Diego. I immediately knew this was my bag. This bag is by the brand Ruka. You're going to see the letters R V C A. That's how you may think you pronounce it, but it's actually pronounced Ruka. And Ruka collaborated with Zach Knoll, who is a surf wave photographer, to create this backpack. I spent $136 buying this bag at San Diego, and it's called the Zach Knoll Camera Bag Number no. 2. Let's go over the outside. It's, I believe, vinyl. It feels like vinyl, so I can easily clean just some of the minor dirt and the scratches. It's also water resistant. Inside here is where all my camera gear is stored. This pocket has more camera accessories, some zip ties, cause you never know when you're gonna need some zip ties. <laughs> this pocket is for my sunglasses. This pocket is lined with this felt material so you can clean your sunglasses with it. It also allows your sunglasses to go in here without getting scratched. Each pocket I strategically place items in so I have a checklist in my mind. Do I have my sunglasses? Check. Do I have my all of my camera batteries? Check. Or if I misplace something, I know what it is and I can start immediately looking for it. On the sides of the bag, one side I use as a water bottle holder and this pocket, which is essentially the same pocket with the same tightening strap, I can use as a tripod holder. This strap with a clip allows you to tighten down the items that are stored on the side so that it won't be wobbling around or swaying you because you want to keep all of your weight 
and a center point. These straps on the top allow you to compress the bag down. There are three. There's a top one and two side ones. And again, compressing the bag down allows you to have a better center weight of gravity so you're not swaying or the bag is and the bag is more compact. I walked about a mile and a half from the bus station to a hotel. I used the hip strap and the chest strap and it kept, it, it kept everything very comfortable walking for a while. In this pocket are all my toiletries for your laptop. And this is my favorite zipper because it's hidden. My keys and my wallet, it's all in one. And my passport. This is the camera portion of my bag. And here are batteries for my DSLR camera, which is the big camera. Some mounts for the Osmo Action in that pocket. So this is just, and there's a zip tie. This pocket is just um, accessories and charging cords. And then this is the main pocket, which you immediately open it up and you see one side is more pop or more pockets. And then this is what I call the curtain for the camera. So it kind of keeps everything more discreet, hidden, um, and a little protected because then when you open up the curtain, you have the camera gear. I have headphones, a pen, more accessories for camera gear, a USB, this is in case I need to transfer any files over from someone that they need to give me, some batteries and an international plug. Here is my DJI drone and the remote controller, my Osmo action camera. This, ca this camera is by DJI. Um, it's for like skiing and surfing, anything that would possibly get wet and you can see I have the floaty device always on it now because this is my second camera. I lost the first one two days after I bought it. So I bought the floaty handle and the floaty case. Charging cables for my drone. This is a hard drive. I keep all of my data, all of my videos and my photos on a hard drive. Here's my DSLR camera and my laptop charging cable. The other camera gear item I have in here is my DJI Osmo Pocket, but I'm currently filming with that. I don't think I'll bring my DSLR camera anymore if it's a trip that's shorter than 10 days. I think that these two cameras and my drone um, can do everything. In my toiletries bag, contact solution, I, I only bring this size contact solution while I'm traveling. If I run out of this, which I did, I can just easily find any kind of pharmacy, drugstore, uh, convenience store, and they likely sell contact solution. Those are the things that I don't mind if I have to buy there. A toothbrush, I don't mind if I have to buy there. So I never worry if I'm gonna leave something out because I always say that you can find it when you're there, which is kind of a sad, sad statement because that means that there's just supermarkets and grocery stores everywhere. These bottles, the outside label is not what's necessarily inside. So anytime I get a travel size bottle, I typically use what's in it and then keep it. Rinse it out and refill it. This is sun bum conditioner, but it's really not. This was shampoo that I pumped into here with my shampoo that's in my shower. This says it's face wash, but it was really conditioner. I just squeeze my toothpaste that I have in my bathroom into here. Tape in here for my splint for my finger. A razor. Now my face wash, it's not just dedicated to face washing. It's just a mild soap so that I can use that also on my body. I try to keep like all of the bottles and all of the things, make them more than one use. Contact carrying case, toothbrush, probiotics. Oil of oregano. In my makeup bag, I have a little thing of essential oil, which is lavender. Concealer, band-aids, mascara, one set of extra contacts and dental floss. What you don't see in here is chapstick. You also don't see deodorant. I should probably start bringing deodorant though because I do seem to smell and sweat more um, when I travel, but honestly, day to day, I don't really wear deodorant because I've never seemed to need it. Now let's get into 
the top half of my bag. This is not a zipper, it's Velcro. My hat, which I try to just put in there only when I'm traveling, like in a plane or a bus or a taxi. And then as soon as I'm stopped or set up in a room, I take it out because as you can see, it gets a little misshaped. And then the second thing, the second item to the top, I put shoes. I put my shoes in here so that they don't dirty my clothes underneath. This trip, I brought tennis shoes, one pair of flip flops. Now the items that I wore on the plane, we're gonna get into, but I had one more pair of shoes, these sneakers. This hairbrush is way too big. I just didn't have time to run to the store and get a mini hairbrush, a hiking hat, a swimsuit cover up. I didn't need a swimsuit cover up. I actually use this towel as a cover up. I wrap it around me or I can actually wrap it as like a little sarong dress. I started using Turkish towels when I lived in the van because they dry easily. Oh, this clutch, I should not have brought that. Los Angeles Lakers shirt, dressy shirt, two sports bras, two bathing suits. I should have only packed one bathing suit. I paired this tank top with um, jeans. I also wore it under this corduroy dress which I only needed two dresses. I would have brought this dress and this dress only. And I would have left behind this dress. I have a white t-shirt, which I also didn't wear. These are just throw on shorts that I wore as pajamas or just walking around town. This is a black regular tank top, two millimeter wetsuit, one pair of socks and one pair of yoga pants. What I did need to bring that I, lo that I left out was a hiking a day pack. Just something that I could fold up and stuff in my bag to go on little hikes with. Either one more pair of yoga pants or like a flowy lounge pant. This is usually my travel outfit. I wear a long sleeve shirt and jeans and then I have my puffy jacket or my down jacket. I wear these items because I get cold while I'm traveling. Also, jeans take up more weight or more volume in your pack. I like to kind of wear things that would take up more vol volume if I packed them. This puffy jacket, everyone has to have some kind of jacket like this that's lightweight. You can use it as a pillow. I use it as a blanket. I'm constantly wearing it, taking it off. I can easily strap it to the top of my pack. So these are the clothes I should have not packed. A clutch, two t-shirts, an extra dress, an extra dressy shirt, a bathing suit cover up, and a second bathing suit. So here is my strategy for packing clothes. I make sure that I only bring clothes that can be packed down easily. For instance, if you look at my dresses, my everyday clothes, they can just be stuffed in here. I have this dress or this shirt, this dress. Do you see the trend here? They're more of those flowy items that you can just throw in and they don't take up much space. I lightly fold the items up. I don't care about much of a shape because I'm gonna stuff them inside here anyways. So I will lightly fold something. For instance, let's take this Laker shirt. And then I will play a game of Tetris. I never ever roll my clothes. So if you roll your clothes like this, and then you stuff it in there, that keeps a certain shape. So all of a sudden, everything that you have is rolled up. And then you don't have, like you may have more room up here or down here. Instead, what I do is I lightly fold the items. And maybe I don't even fold the items. Sometimes I just go like that. And then I just throw it in here. That way, I'm using all the cracks and crevices and all the storage space in my bag. Lightly fold and then stuff and push down and make sure you're getting the sides all the whole circumference, all the sides. Now you're probably thinking right now, oh my gosh, her clothes are probably so wrinkled. I don't know, I've never had anyone complain to me that my, uh, my clothes look too wrinkled or that I look dodgy. 
If you're worried about something wrinkling, then just when you arrive at your destination, take it out, hang it up, especially if you're taking a shower, close the door and steam it. I try to stay away from thick items just because they take up more volume in your bag. So everything is pretty lightweight, pretty thin. And there did become a time on my trip where I said, wow, this shirt smells pretty bad. I need to, um, yeah, I definitely need to go wash it. And I just found a washing machine. You can find washing machines and laundry mats in towns, at a hotel, um, at friends' homes, doesn't really matter. Like you can find a washing machine anywhere. So don't worry about bringing too little of items because you can always go wash an item. So you don't need three long shirts. You can bring one or two long shirts and then go wash them if you need to. Overall, this is what happens. We pack our fears. We say, what if, what if I forget something? Um, oh my gosh, I might not need, I may need some, this and that. And we pack what we fear, all the situations, all the circumstances. Stop packing what you fear. <laughs> Be realistic about what you're going to use. Be realistic about what you're doing and be realistic about the fact that there, you can always buy something in the area. Because remember, the less bags you pack, the less baggage you have. If you have any packing tips for me, please let me know in the comments below. By the time you see this video, I will be in Taos on Sunday. So I will of course include what I'm gonna bring to Taos because these were more of like the hot beach items so I could get by with thinner clothes. But what about going skiing? What about colder climates? Well, let's see what I pack for a ski trip to Taos, New Mexico. I will see you soon, probably next Sunday. Have a great week.